is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 13th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four ship. Well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on into 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got a mixed board out here. You've got the uh, Dow's up 25. The S&P's off 27. NASDAQ's down 21. The Russell's just slightly green. I mean, very slightly. Semis are down 22. Trannies are up 108. New York Stock Exchange is up 11 points. Composites down 197. It is a mixed bag out there. That was for Jimmy in the Tiger's Den. If we take a look at Goldilocks, she's back 740, hitting uh, resistance earlier today. Yesterday, it's trading out at 1820. Silver's down three pennies, trading at 2318. Lights recruit off 33 cents. She's trading at 8230. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside. Lamb Research, 24 bucks. Booking Holdings, 20 25. Biogen, BIIB up 12, that's nearly 6%. Taiwan Semiconductor up 7%, that's nearly 10 bucks. Charter Communication, 1.5% or 9 buckaroonies. To the downside, $79 to the downside, and about 7%. Shopify, Amazon's off 46, 1.5%. Mercado Libre off 39, 3%. Tesla's off 43, about 4%. ServiceNow, 36, 6%. So we've got some movers and some shakers, but what we want to do is begin with the weak link out here, and that's the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ trading the uh, lowest uh, from a percentage standpoint. Uh, so we're going to spend time taking a look at the NDX 100. So to begin with, let's just take a look and see what's going on just simply from a volume metric standpoint. We'll do that by taking a look at two instruments out here. First, we're going to take a look at the Qs, the weighted version. And what we can see here is so the swing point for the Qs that we're using as a benchmark right now is the trading session from just uh, three days ago, October, January the 10th. When the queues moved lower on that trading session, it did volume of 92 million shares, 91.770 to be exact. We'll call it 92 million. Right now, as of 109, so we've been trading from 9.30 to 10.30, 11.30, 12, 31. So we got, what, three and a half hours in a six-hour trading uh, session, six and a half hour trading session. So even if we multiply times two, we get to 82. We're going to be light on volume. Now, I don't know what the end of the day volume is, but right now what we have is a test and rejection of a swing point. The Qs themselves have a bullish structured daily profile. Price is still above the center of that level, 379.20. So if you're asking Stevie at 110 in the afternoon, what is the signal from the Qs? They're not getting ready to bust it to the downside. They don't have the volume. It doesn't mean that things can't change in the next uh, two hours and 50 minutes. Uh, but uh, does that get us to four? Three hours and... 
yeah, you you know what I mean out there. So right now, as we take a look at just the cues, they're not they're they're not saying, hey, we're getting ready to bust out and head to the lows. Now let's take a look at the QQEW, which is even a better reference with regard to what the overall Nasdaq 100 is doing. And here's we take a look at the QQQEW. That's what we use for that. There's I think there's a couple others out there that are equal weighted ETFs for the cues. Here we've got volume with 29,000 shares to the downside. Now when the equal weighted ETF cues on January 10th made its low. It was with 116,000 shares. Now, not big volume here, but we're use, using this really as a benchmark to understand what the market's communicating to you and I at 1.11 in the afternoon. And right now it's telling us it is not getting ready to crack to the downside. Again, this is going to be an important reading at 4 o'clock, more important than it is at 1.11 in the afternoon. But still we're getting information with regard to what's the reading at 1.11. So we know that the issue is not in the equal weighted ETF. That's really clear out here, or at least it's clear to Stevie. Not that there's not problems, but that's not where the issue is. The issue is going to be in that top eight or nine constituents out there that make up almost 50 percent or do make up 50 percent of the uh, ETF, the QQQEW. So I'm sorry, the, Q, the QQQ series. So let's go take a look at what's going on amongst those top nine instruments. Now I say nine, I'm only going to show eight, but that's because Google's got uh, two different uh, uh, stock symbols out there. So here we begin by taking a look at Apple. Actually, you know what I want to do here? I'm just going to show this screen momentarily, and then we'll, let's go back to the um, let's go back to the black background black background charts because there I can pick out and it's easier for you to see the volume uh, as well. But here, as we take a look at this, I'm just looking at these top eight instruments. Which ones are the ones that are the most concerning out here? And I would say it would be Microsoft. We'll take we're certainly going to look at that, and Nvidia. The reason why I choose those two, it's not because I chose them, it's because the market chose them, is that we can see that in the case of Microsoft, its oscillator and change line had changed from green to red. And yesterday was that test of that line. That is bearish action. So we're going to take a look at the volume to see what it says. If we take a look at NVIDIA, the same thing. Yesterday, its oscillator and change line changes colors. Basically, it was a test yesterday as well as today. So those are the two real weak links from that perspective out here. Now let's go take a look at the volume metrics is i'm not sure that that's a word out there in fact i'm pretty sure that it's not but now let's come back here so the first one we're going to look at is apple so we want to see apple it's trading back i don't know if it's even gotten back no it has not gotten back to that swing point so again the swing point that we're looking here looking at from a benchmark in the case of apple is january 10th and in the case of the qqew the same thing in the case of the q so volume there was 106 million we're at 44 million shares so the number one instrument that could push the markets lower is apple and it doesn't it hasn't even gotten down to that swing point and it's pulling back on substantially lighter volume now in the case of apple here kind of an interesting profile in that the bottom of the profile is below the prior bottom but the top is above the prior top what this is telling you and i is really to get if we use apple as a uh, a harbinger of what is to come this says consolidation so this says two-way trading market out here. So actually today's exercise is pretty important for us to take a look at. So in the case of Apple, it's not saying, hey, prepare for a move south. Microsoft, I believe, is still the number two holding inside the QQQs out here, as we talked about. Gave us a bad signal yesterday or a bearish signal yesterday by testing that oscillator and change line, which was red. Uh, it's pulling back. So far today, its volume is 18 million shares. So it's the weak link out here, just simply from that oscillator and change line standpoint. And it's pulling back with really light volume. It's got 44 million shares on January 10th. 308.16 should absolutely hold in the case of Microsoft. We'll come back. We'll finish looking at Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, NVIDIA, Google, and uh, Broadcom, ABGO. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019. 
finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're uh, we're taking a look at the top uh, nine instruments inside the NDX 100, the QQQ Series ETF out here. And we're just trying to understand the volume in today's pullback out here. So we looked at Apple and Microsoft. We were able to identify that both of those, those are the two top instruments, are pulling back with much lighter volume. In the case of uh, Amazon, uh, same message out here. Now, Amazon has already tested and so far rejected that swing point from January 10th, which did volume of 4.4 million shares <clears throat> as of 118. You're 1.4 million shares. So there's another test and rejection. Well, let's go to the next one, which would be Facebook, I believe. As we take a look at Facebook, uh, has this gotten back to its swing point? Oh, it has. So January 10th, the swing point did 25 million shares. You're at 8 million shares as we speak right now. So not that it can't get a lot of volume going in the next three hours, but if if – if nothing strange happens out there, you've got your first four instruments inside the NDX wonder that are testing and rejecting that key swing point. Of course, it's going to be dependent upon four o'clock versus right now. But right now, as we speak, they're testing and rejecting those swing points. They're saying we're not ready to head lower out here. Let's go to the next one, which would be Tesla. Now, Tesla, T-S-L-A, let's go see what it's doing. It's also testing. We're getting close to testing its swing point from January 10th. That had volume of 31 million shares. You're at 20 million. So Tesla's got the volume. Uh, but if it does close above, let me get the uh, swing point high for you. If it does close above 1059.10, and you're at 1059.82 right now, you'll at least have a rejection of that swing point. That would then say if it does more than 30 million shares today, price will at least get back and test that high of 1059.10. If it closes below 1059.10 and it does so with volume, Tesla could be suggesting that it wants to get back and test the low of that swing point from January 10th, and that's priced at 980. 
So you do have Tesla, the first one of the uh, five, that is pulling back with some volume. Let's check out NVIDIA out here. NVDA is a ticker symbol. It's trading into that same January 10th swing point, which did volume on that day of uh, 60 million shares. And today, 35 million shares, yeah. And this has tested and rejected its uh, TAS market profile, the bottom of that, which is down at the 266.57. So it's not ready for prime time to bust out the lows. Google, we'll just take a look at G-O-O-G -O -O -G out there. We'll get a decent enough feel for what it's, volume. well, shoot, it's not even close to getting back and testing that swing point from January 10th, which did a million of 1.7. You're at 600,000 shares, but you're quite a ways away from that out here. Um, all it's done is tested yesterday's swing, which did one point, uh, yesterday's gap to the upside, uh, two days ago, I take that back, there's a gap, uh, and it looks like it has basically filled that, and it's pulled back into that with lighter volume. So Google doesn't look like it's prime time ready to go to the downside. Let's the uh, last instrument out here, AVGO, AVGO, which is uh, Broadcom. As we take a look at Broadcom, Broadcom is trading uh, into that swing point from January 10th. That swing had 2.9 million shares. You're into it with 1.1. Wow. Yeah, so you've just got light volume. Now, look, both Avgo and, and Microsoft are the two worst-looking instruments out there. I would say, now here's the deal, though, and you can't see this. If Avgo, Broadcom itself, can get below, just spike below the low from January 10th, that low is 603.57, then today will become the bar following bar number nine, and you would have a TD9 count pattern at a breakout level. And this thing broke out with volume back on December the 10th, it did it with 5.7 million shares. And again, you're pulling back with 1.1. It is pulling back into a breakout level with a very light volume. So there's. So what does this tell us at this stage here? We'll go simply go back to the QQQ series ETF. And this is what you should be watching for. And that is, does the Q close below or above 380.64? 380.64 is the top from that swing point from the trading day of January 10th. Doesn't look like we're going to get the volume. If you test and reject that level, we probably go back to test those highs, 389 level, the top of its daily profile. If you close under 380.64, even with lighter volume, well, then you can get back and test the bottom of that swing point. However, in this instance, you can see the QQQ series ETF has trading into a bullish structured profile. And that would say that what the Q should do, even if you do close below 380.64, is find support between 375.90 and 379.20. <laughs> That was a mouthful out there. Now, we're not going to do the same thing for the S&P and try to go through its top 10 interest, but we do want to go take a look at the SPY, the IW, and the Diamond. Just try to get some type of volume profile perspective, so to speak. I probably shouldn't use the word profile. In the case of the SPYs uh, has not made its way back to the uh, swing point from January 10th. It's got 120 million shares today, you're at 38 million. So again, pulling back on light volume. The IWM, the Russell 2000 is certainly struggling out there. So the Russell 2000 is testing that January 10th swing point, 45 million shares, you're doing it today with 19 million shares, wow. Let's uh, finish this off and take a look at the Dow Diamonds. The Dow Diamonds out here, they're pulling back, have not made it anywhere near that swing point from January 10th. About 9 million shares that day. Today, you're only about 3.8. Yeah, it does not look like these markets are prime time ready to head to the south. Speaking of heading to the south, let's go to the north. Let's go up to Philly and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Uh, hi, Steve. I think you're talking to me. Uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, Jeff. I'm also Jeff. in Philly. I know there's a John from Philly who calls in. This is uh, Jeff. Jeff, um, my apology. But, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, at the third grade reading level, and uh, <laughs> I, I promise to uh, do my homework tonight. I, I, won't, I won't make that mistake again. At least I hope I won't. You know, so, it doesn't matter if you can read. It only matters if you can uh, call which way the stocks are going. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Good. All right. So you'll let me off the you'll, you'll let me off the tools. So, Jeff, how can I help you? What do, what do you want to look at? Yes. Yes, I, I have an odd uh, question for you, and I, I can tell you why I'm asking it if you want. But uh, my question is. Um, what your recommendation would be if I wanted to uh, periodically find the 10 top most traded uh, momentum stocks. So like if I wanted uh, to use a, a, a screener or something like that, um, you know, how would I go about uh, a criteria or maybe the inside of an ETF or something like that if I wanted to see the, the 10 most traded uh, momentum stocks? Yeah, so I think, so I, I don't know the answer to that question. 
Uh, so let me let me so so I, I don't know that what I would throw out to you, though, uh, is something that would have to be answered is what are you going to use for the determination of momentum? Oh, that was my question. Ah, well, <laughs> because there's a, yeah, so there's a number of different tools out there that you could use. Um, so I, I really think you've got to. You know, you, you've got to make a determination because I don't think there's like one clear cut determination with regard to what's okay. going to be momentum out there. Um, so well, I, I don't know. Tell you what I'm using now uh, currently is um, I look at the uh, uh, percent of uh, ATR. So uh, like I, I would identify a momentum stock as having some minimum large volume, like maybe two million shares a day. And like who, which one has the highest percentage uh, ATR on the average. And is that working? Uh, well, it's certainly, uh, I've identified stocks and they, they look like momentum stocks. But with, so the reason I'm asking this is that uh, every morning at 920, you know, right before the open, I look at the pre-market volume of the top 10 momentum stocks. And I use that as an indicator of whether to take uh, certain trades. If there's really high volume, I don't want to take the certain kind of trade that, that I might take. Okay. So um, I use it as an indicator. Well, let's do this, Jeff. Uh, hang on, if you would. We're going to go to a break here, pay a couple of bills. But we should be back in about three to four minutes. And let's pick up the uh, conversation at that point in time. This is Steve Rhodes with Jeff in Philly. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Jeff in Philly. And Jeff asked a, a great question, which is, uh, how do you identify maybe the top 10 uh, momentum stocks in the marketplace at any one point in time? And during our conversation, Jeff, you know, I was kind of monitoring some of the chatter inside the Tiger's Den, an, an extraordinary group of, of intellect inside there. And I was really trying to... You know, look for their answers. See what see what they had. I mean, you know, and you've probably looked at some of the different momentum ETFs out there. But you know, that's probably not what you're really looking for. Um, and we got question. We got answers to your question that are all over the board. You know, some people say, "Hey, take a look at the uh, uh, MACD tool." Some say, "You look at the oscillator and change line." Some take a look at the rate of change. Another one, take a look at stock twits and see, you know, what the uh, what the top ten. Uh, uh, yeah. Rick, you know, uh, search stocks are things. So it's just really all over the board, uh, Rich. And I don't have a good answer for you. I was hoping maybe I could get that great answer outside of the tiger's den. But again, it's just a number of different factors that each person might use to determine what momentum is. So I, I apologize for that, but it, it is what it is. Oh, that's fine. It's kind of a random uh, question, but I appreciate your uh, your candidness, and uh, you know, I appreciate that. That that's helpful. To, yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, you know, momentum um, stocks, some people might say, you know, look at the IBD 50 as an example. I mean, those are those are certainly high beta momentum type names out there. Um, but I don't know. See, I don't know how you'd get to the top. It just I would say you do what you're doing or maybe you make some change to it and uh, and see if it, you know, see if it works for you. I just don't have yeah. that solution. Not well, that I wouldn't like it. I just don't have finding it. these stocks that that are, you know, that move dynamically, which uh, I guess that's what a momentum stock is with sufficient volume. So it, it's a pretty simple screen. I just put it in a in a screener, you know, uh, yeah. minimum two million shares a day. And um, then I just get all the answers and I sort them by ATR. Sure, and, sure. And uh, take a look at them. And then, like you uh, had mentioned, I, there is uh, uh, an ETF that I use. I think it's called MOMO. The symbol, and uh, yeah. I look at the top ten holdings in there, and that's another uh, source, and uh, you know some others, and then I kind of see uh, what names appear from all the different sources that I'm looking at, and, and pick them out. But you know, I just thought there might be some other ideas I haven't thought of. And what happens is, like uh, stocks that that say are Momo trade today, uh, over time I notice that the volume um, keeps going down. So I, I need to replace those names in my list, you know, with a new name that's more suitable. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so tell me, your, your analysis the last couple of days, what has it said? Or what have you gleaned out of it? Or is this just really, is this, a use this for a directional tool in the market? Or for what it is you're going to trade? Or I might have missed that, right. and I apologize. Sure. Well, I, I don't, I haven't used the screener in a bit. Like, I, I would only use it, like, maybe once every two, three months to see if there's a, a better name to have on my top 10 list. But I look at the pre-market volume, uh, like around 920 uh, every morning on the 10 stocks that I have. And mm -hmm. um, um, what, what, <laughs> so I, I could really go down the rabbit hole here. But the, yeah, yeah. the trade, well, so I use that volume with a 20-day moving average. And if it's uh, if it says it's high compared to a 20-day moving average, then I don't want to take the certain trade. And the certain trade I take, it's called uh, fading the opening gap on mm -hmm. uh, equity index, like uh, the Dow Jones, like the YM futures contract. Mm -hmm. So when it opens, if you don't look at the overnight trading, you can uh, often see there's a gap. And sometimes you want to fade that gap. In other words, take a trade, assuming that price is going to close that gap and go back to yesterday's close. Right. Right. And when there's a lot of volume in the market in the morning, something, well, not every time, but it, it kind of signals that something big is about to happen. And uh, that trade doesn't work so well when something big is about to happen. So okay. I'm kind of trying to catch <clears throat> a sentiment in the pre-market trading. It says, oh, boy, there's a whole lot of volume here. I think something's about to happen. Big move today or a trend day or something like that. I don't want to take my fade the gap trade. 
that, that, yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, look, it, it sounds logical. I, I get what you're trying to do. I, I wish I could, or somebody in the den might be able to point you in a, in an additional direction. But uh, I think it's it's something that you just have to customize yourself, like you are. So congratulations on doing that. Uh, is there anything else that I can look at for you, as long as you're on the phone and I screwed up your name to begin with? <laughs> no, I, I love listening to you, Steve. I, I, you're very entertaining and very informative and, and very helpful to everybody that calls. So you're you're doing a great job. I really uh, oh, thank you. That was kind that of you to say. That you're on yeah. There. yeah, it was kind of you to say. Look, we're we're all one team out here. You know, I just get the I just get the use of the microphone for about an hour. And really, great people inside our Tigers Den, uh, and good questions all of our viewers and listeners like yourself out there. And so, you know, when you do call with a question like that. You know, we're just trying to I'm just trying to assess if anybody's got some some way to really help you out and then help us out, help me out. You know, we're all, we're always learning. Every day is a learning experience in this market. So, uh, yes, hey, I tell you, uh, trading is amazingly uh, a deep and wide subject. I was really shocked to find that out. I thought it would be relatively shallow body of knowledge when I first decided to become a trader. And, oh, my, it's it's never ending. It's like an infinite number of ways to trade and information. And Well, you use the term, yeah, you, yes, yes, you use the term rabbit hole. So, yeah, once you get into it, you're going down it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. All right. All right. Good. I won't take more of your time. Thank you very much, Steve. You bet. Thank you for calling. That was Jeff in Philly. I believe we've got another caller on the line. Give me a moment here to try to find out if we do. Um, uh, hey, could you post that in the Tiger's Den for me? I'm not sure. A, a number of uh, – we got uh, Rich. So we got Rich on the phone. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Doing good, Steve. How about yourself? Very good. So this is Rich in the Orlando area. Is that the voice I recognize? Yes, I am. Hey, perfect, yes, perfect, yes, perfect. Good, nice, to, nice to hear your voice. So, I believe you're calling about ticker symbol VRNT uh, Variant Systems. Is that correct? Correct, correct. Perfect. It's a software perfect. development company, and it just looks like it's just like the Energizer, you know, bunny here. It just kind of keeps going. And the question I have for you is that someplace it should take a break. What does your analysis look like? Boy, it sure looks like it is breaking out as we speak right now, as it's trading above yes. all of its profile levels, prior swing points. Um, right now, this month, it's taking out the uh, swing point, which was a big, big uh, bar back in February of 2021. Um, so the high there is uh, 52.70 or 54.12. So it does look like this thing is in pretty big breakout mode. Let me just pull over the white background chart and see if there's anything here that you and I can glean from it. So when we take a look at the daily time frame, what uh, what I do know is there's a potential for a short-term top uh, because it is in wave. I've got it as potentially wave number seven. Uh, we won't get a confirmation of that wave until we see a lower high. If you were to ask me where would price – so are, you're not in this instrument at this stage? You're thinking of getting in? No, I'm in it. I'm in it. You are. Question. Sometimes I try to write covered calls on these things. and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, this one here just seems like it just keeps wanting to go. But it, none of, nothing goes forever, you know. And, um, True. True. So I don't have. So on the like daily it's, time frame. It's just yeah, moving. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So so on the daily time frame, um, on the daily time frame, if this were to pull back, the first level of support is not much lower than where it's trading, fifty three forty six, and the second level where it really should find support is the top of its daily profile, which was tested uh, three times already, and that's 51.54, and that's a daily time frame. Uh, but do me a favor, Rich. Uh, I know you held on through that last call. I'm going to ask you to hold on just a bit longer so that you and I come no, back. No, happy and to take, do it, Steve. No yeah, we'll take, look at, we'll take a look at the weekly chart, the monthly chart, and try to figure out where this is headed to. And that's ticker symbol, folks, VRNT. Steve Rhodes will be back in just a few moments with Rich. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Paper White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, phone, uh, folks. We're out the line with Rich in Orlando. We're taking a look at uh, Verint Systems, a real rocket ship. So during the breakout there, Rich, uh, the one thing that I noticed when I looked at the long-term time frame chart, the monthly out here, that the high that formed back on uh, February of 2021 was a TD9 count top. And that went ahead and pulled price back. Um, and uh, now we're trading above that. So I don't know where January is going to end, but if it does close above 52.70, that's the high from uh, that uh, trading session. This, this tells you it wants to move higher. Now, how do I gauge where price might be moving to out here? How do you gauge where price might be moving to? At this stage here, um, you know, I, I could put it in an A to B equals CD pattern, but it's going to just say we're headed to the moon, and maybe it is. So the next likely stop, is in the 5576 level. I'm not saying that's a top, Rich. I'm just saying that's next, mm -hmm. next like stop. And that's just simply by taking, uh, measuring the swing point high from that trading session of February 21st and pulling it back to when it made a low on the uh, trading session of July 19th. Above that would be the 1.618 expansion, 5965. Again, I'm not saying that's the end of the move, but what I don't really see out here. Um, is any type of a topping pattern. Now, it does have a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal for its a monthly time frame that's been triggered. If you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that could identify a top, but it's on a monthly chart. That's longer term out there, so I don't see that happening. The weekly has that same signal triggered here. Uh, price moving higher to with less relative energy. If we were to see a bearish reversal candle, then that would be a you know a top that could take price back even to 45 44 that's on the weekly time frame but but we have to wait for that to form and, and there's no indication that that's going to happen at this stage here and the daily chart also has that roads momentum indicator signal so that's really the area to focus on if there were to be a bearish reversal candle then we probably get back to 51 54 maybe it's slower out there but um yeah this thing is uh this thing has done really well 
at holding profile levels. It hasn't been below the bottom of a profile uh, since September of uh, last year. I take that back. There was one day it broke below the bottom of profile on December 1st. But other than that, the next time was back in in September. So really strong um, momentum. I don't know if it's momentum stock. A really strong stock out here. So I don't know if I've confused you, if I've answered anything for you. Um, but uh, no, no, I think you've helped a lot again. because, like I say, it, it looks like a very strong stock to me. Also, it's yeah. just that uh, you know you kind of get a little, you know, a little uh, hesitant. As, uh, I mean, one of the nice things from my point of view is that it isn't like a rocket ship. I mean, it's been a nice, slow, gradual. It, it's had a you know had a shot there like February a year ago. Yes. But other than that, it's just been slowly just rising, and it has not really retracted. It's just no. been a nice slow rise. Um, I, I the agree. The question I would have for you: It's not really a. a there's only a, the the volume on it is not that terribly high, uh, heavy. I yes. mean, it's a younger company, I guess, and it's a, a smaller company. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I mean, I guess with a smaller float, you know, maybe it, the, if things would go bad, it could go bad quickly. I'm not sure, but it does not look like that's, you know, there at this moment. Well, I mean, it's, it sounds like it sounds like you've been in it for a while, um, and if that's the case, uh, you know, you probably have some nice profits in it. Um, I'd say until you get some type of really significant indication that this thing has changed its trend, you, you you stick with this. Okay, and that's what I that's what I've been doing. I just kind of get kind of antsy because, like you say, nothing. <laughs> Nothing goes forever, you know, but uh, it definitely has been moving right along here. Right. So the one thing that, you know, so the antsy part, the easiest way for me to help you with that antsy part is, and not all stocks do this, but, you know, during this show, I take a look at certain patterns that when they present themselves, they help us to identify that there is a top or at least a short term top. One of those is the right. Rose Momentum Indicator Signal. Well, you need a bearish reversal candidate to confirm that until that happens. You stay in the stock. Uh, we're in bar number three. We're in bar number three of a TD nine count. Um, the last two TD nine counts have uh, worked. They created a small hiccup, kind of like you've identified out here, just a very small retracement. Uh, we're only in bar number three today, so we're ways away from that. Um, wave number seven would be another look on a daily time frame. I don't have that out here, although I'd have to really do uh, wave counts uh, slightly different than what, what I've got shown here. But I just don't see the signal. A, a, a sell the D point. That also requires a bearish reversal candle. So I think what you would do is look for a bearish reversal candle. The other thing I would do is the oscillator and change line on a daily basis is 53.46 you know the hair in their neck maybe would stand if price were to be below that level but i think you've got i think is you i don't know where the top tick is and i know that's not your question i wish i knew where it was um it's easier for for me to let the market communicate what it's going to do and right sure. now it, the communication is it still wants to move higher but we can't control what takes place huh? a minute from now, as you pointed out. And so if you do get that bearish reversal candle, then maybe at that stage is when you start taking a look at doing something else. Well, that's valuable information. I appreciate that very much. And just as the other callers had mentioned, you know, Tom and you and the other fellows, you really provide a, a wonderful service. And uh, the opportunity to call in and talk about a stock is, is again, another very very nice feature that uh, you know that that you that's offered, and the various programs that you fellows offer are, are very valuable. And well, that's great. You. Well, well, Rich, uh, we're we're nothing without you. So it all starts with you and uh, Jeff and uh, and uh, and everybody else, uh, all the folks in the Tiger's Den. So so thanks for being a uh, valued uh, uh, listener here at TFNN. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again. You've got a unique voice, so I was right, able to pick, I meant that in a good way, so I was able to pick up on Thank it. You. That uh, Yeah, you bet, you bet. All right, thanks for calling. So, uh, folks, uh, just got a couple minutes before we go to a breakout here, and let me just check the email to see if there are any questions that have come in. Certainly there's there's a couple at least. Uh, this one coming in from Hector wants to take a look at uh, ASML. And he's interested in where is the uh, ASML. He's interested in where is the oscillator and change line so uh, for support and resistance. So let's go take a look at Azimil Holdings out here. And I'm going to put up the white background charts just to answer that question. So it's 752.40 on the daily time frame. So this did generate a TD9 count bottom three days ago. Uh, your preference would be for this to remain above that oscillator and change line. If it closed below 752.42 today and you're looking uh, for a possible uh, 
possible buy the D point. For, so forget the buy the D point. You've got a valid TD9 count out here. Now, I'm just going to go back to the black background chart. Just curious what its volume metric is today on its pullback versus that swing point, that TD9 count, which it hasn't hit or anything. But just what is it doing in relationship to that? So it made a slow back on the trading day of November. I'm sorry, January 11th. Volume there was 2.1 million shares. You're pulling back today with less than half that volume out there. Now that so so what I would do here because it's below the oscillator and change line, trading into a bullish structured profile, and you're looking for an entry point. Uh, we'll go look at the monthly chart as well. But on a daily chart, this would suggest around 730.31. So the high of that swing point is 731.44. That's a January 11th area. Um, so, you know, maybe tomorrow if this does pull back further, it should if it closes below the oscillator and change line. You know, look at that swing point volume. It could be 710.58, could be 730.31. But that would be the range that you're in. This has an average daily movement of 26 bucks. So your stop hector should be $26 times 1.618. That's going to be a pretty wide stop out there. And what's cool about that is you can get in here. If you get a close below that TD9 count, you just simply that will negate that pattern. You exit it. You exit the trade. You're just using this for position sizing. So hope that helps you out with regard to ASML. During the break, I'll look at the monthly and weekly charts, see if there's anything else there. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're taking a look at ASML Holdings for Hector. 
and Patty. So, you know, Hector, we, we took a look at the daily time frame. It's got the TD9 count bottom. I then went and took a look at the weekly time frame just to try to understand because we're, we're testing a weekly swing point. That's the week that began October 4, 2021. It did volume of 6.1 million shares. It's only Thursday and you're at 6.1 million shares. So it's kind of pushing back with volume. It's, you know, it's, it's held that swing point low, but it kind of is suggestive that next week we could see this thing pull back further. Now, price has held the top of the monthly profile. Of course, we're only 13 days into the actual calendar month out here. So, and I don't want to be confusing to you, but the message here in Asmil Holdings is a bit confusing to me. So here's what you know. It's got a valid TD9 count bottom. It hits resistance today. Fails and pulls back. That's at 769.76. Let this thing get into that swing point from a couple of days ago. If it's got the right volume metrics and it holds 710.58, you know, you can fire away for some type of uh, trade out there. And you may find resistance again at 769.76. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for writing in. It looks like our last question out here is going to go for John in Philly. And uh, since I had invoked his name earlier, you want to take a look at BHP. And right now, I've got the weekly time frame chart up on our screen. It looks very positive. Um, it is uh, only in bar number seven. Uh, it's, it looks like to me that it wants to continue to move higher. On the daily time frame out here, you've gapped up. You gapped up yesterday. A couple, yeah, yesterday. Uh, it took out yesterday's gap up, took out its TD9 count top. Did it in one day. This says strong momentum to the upside. So kind of get back to Rich's question. He was looking for strong momentum stocks. Well, at this stage here, BHP fits that category for me by forming a TD9 count and just simply ignoring it. So this suggests that it wants to head higher. Yeah, you're headed into that wall of worry of uh, where this thing is gapped down to the downside. But this looks pretty strong when I take a look at the daily time frame chart. And the monthly price is above the top of its monthly profile. And now the green oscillator and change line. John, this says that this wants to try to get back into the 80-ish type range out there. So, folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Stay tuned. you got two more great hours left. I'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. sharp, Friday morning, 8 a.m. Please join me live if you can. If not, uh, we'll certainly make sure the show is pertinent for the 1 o'clock time frame. Have a terrific Thursday. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow, folks.